So I'm going to make another board which is applied to me at no cost by PCBWay. So I've already done this before on the video on this previously when I built this board. This is a 100 to 1 ratio voltage divider. I need to make a 10 to 1 as well. So here you go, there's the 100 to 1 which I've already built and I had to do some work on just adjusting the values I wanted on here for this trimmer. The resistor values themselves are okay but the trimmer I had to just tweak how I designed that bit, I just changed it very slightly. So I'm actually down to a 2k trimmer on there now, a very fine adjustment. But this one here, because it's a 10 to 1, the resistor values are very different. I actually originally calculated this one for a 200k pot, which is what this one started out as. For the ratios on this one being much finer, 200k was completely inappropriate as it turned out. But this one might still be correct, so I need to build this one up and then I can try this one out. And once I've got that fine line, so I can update the Gerbers as required for each type and put the notes on the boards and upload these to my Patreon so my Patreon supporters can actually get these Gerber files and make their own boards. You too could make these dividers. Handy little tools to have. I've been wanting to make some of these for ages and I've finally got around to it. We're doing some follow-up videos today as well, so there'll be probably one more video after this, maybe two. But I've got to do a couple of projects with these boards as well, which involves the binding posts, getting those, reassembling these, doing the final testing, putting it into an enclosure, and I've got things like that to do. Anyway, these boards are made by PCB Bay, and as you can see, I've got these enigged. So these are gold plated boards, right? So that all, the, all this is gold, which means it's very corrosion resistant. These are basically so I can do a check on a high voltage piece of equipment, like a DC voltage calibrator, for example, which can put out to up to 1000 volts. As you don't truly know how accurate your multimeter is at those ranges, unless you've had it calibrated, it can be a bit tricky to actually know whether or not it's right. But because I have something like this, the PDVS2 Mini from Ian Johnston. I highly recommend you get one. There'll be links down below in my description for that. If you get one of those, you can quite accurately calibrate your DC calibrator to a point, and obviously, you know, within reason, you know, the tolerances and stuff like that. It's not perfect, but it gets you pretty close. You can then use that to have your multimeter accurate by using, so like my Fluke 343A, for example, it's quite good. I can do the basic calibration with the PDVS2 Mini. And then because it's got the dividers built into it, the, the fluke will actually be more accurate by dividing down. And then I can calibrate the multimeters from that. The idea then is that you've got a multimeter which is quite accurate at the low range, but the high end, you've got no idea. This is obviously based upon having a meter which hasn't been calibrated for some time, or you've maybe picked up something, you know, or you do it yourself, you know, a bit of a DIY home metrology thing. To be able to measure a high voltage source with a low voltage measuring instrument gives you the chance to actually do some kind of verification at least that you're close won't be perfect but it's going to be close so if you've got a precision divider like this well hopefully like this then you can actually say measure a thousand volts in a 100 volt range if you're doing a 10 to 1 which is what I'm going to be building today a 100 volt range or if you want to do a 100 volt divider a 100 to 1 divider which is what this unit is this one's 100 to 1 which I already built before so you can measure a thousand volts at 10 volts what that means is when you've got something like this you can do a direct side by side comparison between the voltages this thing puts out 10 volts exactly and then if you've got a thousand volts going in, you can calibrate your thousand volt source as long as you can trust the reliability of this. Obviously you've got a certain, you know, a certain amount of uncertainty as a percentage of variation. When I did the first calibration on this, because it's open air and I was holding the ball and stuff like that, I think I was getting something like 0.01% accuracy or roundabouts from this thing um, at the time I calibrated it, obviously. Well, I adjusted it. I suppose you can see it's alignment really, I don't know. It's not really a true calibration. That means that you can at least get a pretty good feel for how accurate your DC source is. Or maybe, I haven't tried it on an AC source yet, it probably will work on an AC source as well, but I haven't tried it on an AC source yet. But it will be. We're going to build this one as a 10 to 1. So I'm not going to recover everything I covered in the previous one, because if you want to see the finer details of this one, go and check that video out. I will be linking it probably up there, or maybe in the description or something like that. And obviously it's on my Patreon page for the actual individual parts list. Now the actual parts I'm using, will be linked down below in the description. I'll be having links to them, so if you need anything you need to try and source, you can get it from down there. Okay, let's get on with it. I'll waffle enough. So when I got these boards made, I had PCBWay also make me a stencil for these boards to make making them a lot easier. If you're doing lots of boards, you make like a little jig, like a corner piece or something, you stick this into the corner, it lines up with the stencil. But this is how they supplied it on this piece of board here. So I'm actually just gonna use it as it is and just slide this underneath, align it manually underneath the stencil and then paste it from that. I highly recommend you go and check out PCWay, go and check out the links down below. I use them for my boards, not only because they sponsor me, but even before then, I actually used to get my boards made by them. I've been very happy with their quality. So here you go, that's aligned up there now. Now when I did this before, I used this old mechanic solder paste, which I think was okay when I first got it, but unfortunately it's kind of expired, and I had trouble with it 
last time causing bridges I had to reseat all the components afterwards so I'm not going to use this again I think this one's had its day basically it's uh, it's going a bit crusty inside the middle bit's still okay but outside that it's all rock solid so I'm going to chuck this one away and say it's it's done but I do have some brand new solder paste in haven't used it yet we'll give this one a go we'll see what this one's like hopefully it comes out okay I've not done much in the way of like solder paste and this kind of work I haven't done much at all actually it does come with a, a nozzle I'm not going to use that I'm not individually putting on paint so I'm just going to spudger it across so stick on in here Of course, the only problem with the syringe is that you can't put it back in. It's certainly looking a lot nicer than the other paste I had. Do I have enough? I hope so. Maybe I don't, actually. I don't know, maybe just enough. Just trying to use just enough because I don't want to waste it. I don't, I don't like wasting stuff. I know some people say, oh, you have to do it one sweep across the board, and you know what? I really don't care. <laughs> I just want paste on it. As long as it's got enough paste in each hole, I really don't care about exactly how it went on. I mean, does it have to be exactly right? Maybe. I mean, not. Maybe you're doing precision stuff, you know, really small pen stuff, then maybe it matters, but really, I don't think it matters for this. Alright, that's all on there. And I'll clean this all up later on. Didn't waste much at all, which is good. Here we go, let's have a close look. I think that's right. I don't think that's perfectly aligned. I think I might have been slightly off to one side there maybe. But it's pretty good, I think. Certainly a lot more liquid than the other one I did. So now we've got it done, we're going to place parts on. Okay. So what we need to look at is all the parts we're going to use. So, well, last one used 470Ks across here. I'm actually tempted to change this. I mean, that's what I designed it around, but that's, what that means is it's about 1.1 odd mega ohms total resistance across the input, which is fairly good, but not that good. It shouldn't matter too much. I am wondering if I should actually do this as like a 10 mega ohm or something like that input. Think about this. Maybe I'll do another board later on and I'll remake it with a 10 mega ohm input and just um, reduce the loading on it. So for now I'm just going to use it as I designed it, which is 470k across all of these resistors here, these 10, 1 to 10, they were 470k. We've got to do this bank up here as well, and obviously R21 and the actual tuner. This little guide here, resistor value is 10 to 1 or 101 in brackets. So we did 4.7k, 7.5k and 3.6k before, and I ended up changing that one to be a 5.1k and a 2k trimmer, that's what I ended up with in the end. But I'm going to do the 10 to 1 this time, so I need 47k's in all of these, apart from two. They have 8.2Ks in them, and then R21 will be a 270K, and the trimmer will be a 200K. And we'll start off with that, but I may need to change the trimmer and that resistor there. I may just adjust those after I've got some preliminary findings going on, change that trimmer to be even like 10K, depends on how it ends up being, basically. I don't want too broad a tuning range, I want precision from the tuner. As long as it covers a range well enough, say 1% or something like that, I'll be happy with that kind of tolerance on it. Um, the previous one ended up with about 5% tolerance, plus or minus 5% on the tuner, which I think is a bit broad. So if I can get down to like 1 or 2%, I think I'd be happy with that. And then you can get quite a good fine adjustment on it. But obviously it depends on environmental variables right now, anyway. So it's a bit hard to say until you're actually inside a box and probably shielded. Let's get some parts on this thing. So here's the 470Ks, we so get a bunch of these out. I'm not counting, I probably should be. You can actually see this a lot better than I can right now because you've got a nice zoom view. Look at that, got the right number out. So I'll tap all down, make sure to push down. That's the 470s done. Now I want 47s. There you go, 47s. So these are going to be in 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. Resistor 13 and 18 are different values because they're in parallel with the trimmer and obviously R21 as well, which is in series of the trimmer. 
So I need to make these ones 8.2k. I'm not sure that's right, that sounds wrong to me. Have I made a mistake here? Let me go and check the maths on this, that might be wrong. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be 82k, not 8.2k, because everything's supposed to be a multiplier of 10, basically, between the two types, apart from this stage here, because that's a little bit different for the trimmer. I think that should be 82k, so I need to fix that. That'll be fixed on the Gerbers, which everyone can download from the Patreon page. If this is wrong, I can always tune it again. It's not really a big deal, but in theory, 82k will give me, without this extra circuitry in there, but it'll give me 103 volts out if I put 1,000 volts in, for example, based on my calculations. I'm pretty sure it's about what I want, anyway. The solder paste is spreading out everywhere. It's a bit of a concern. No one will leave it. The uh, oh, it's spreading. Okay, now we want 21, which is going to be a 270k. I think I may end up increasing that and reducing the value of the trimmer. I will just try it as it is for the time being. For some reason, I'm doubting my own design. <laughs> it's never a good thing, is it? Right, let this way out. Okay, so all those parts on there. Let's solder them on. So the solder these I'm using this, same thing I used before, I'm using the hot plate, set to 240 degrees, or it should be anyway, I've not checked it, yeah, 240 degrees. And um, we'll heat this up and we'll drop the board on, give it a chance to wipe a little bit first. Otherwise it will evaporate the uh, the flux off straight away. Don't want that, that's what happened before the other one as well, the other board I made, the flux was evaporated off before it was needed to, and it uh, resulted in parts being bridged. Could have been the, flag, the pace itself as well. So we'll chuck this on here, you can watch it melt and we'll see how it goes. We'll watch that together. And fingers crossed it goes better than the last one did. That was a bit of a pain. My hot plate is up to about 200 degrees now. Well, at least on the front panel, it's probably going to be lagging behind slightly on the top. Let's put the bolt on and see how quickly it goes. Also, take a bit of time to transfer through, but that's alright. We've already seen some activity there. A couple of resistive ones. Don't want to go to the spots. This is very different to what I did yesterday, which just sat there and actually have surface tension problems. So that's looking pretty good there. I reckon that's done. Let's let it cool down again. So we go, the board is still cooling down, but it's cold enough to touch now, so I can pick it up and show you. That's looking kind of alright. Okay, better than the one I did yesterday. So that's excellent. Now what I need to do to be sure though, is to measure the resistances across each section. Didn't really cover this today, but I should really cover it. I mentioned it in the previous video. Each section is a ladder and they are pairs of two in a series string of five. Basically, right, both sets are the same. Apart from this one here, which has a parallel resistor and trimmer. So it goes this trimmer and that resistor are in series together in parallel across those two, which is why those got a different value resistor there. And the idea here is that when you use multiple resistors in parallel, you have better accuracy. It's an odd game, really, right? It's statistical stuff. So resistors are sorted and bin depending upon their accuracy to the mean value. So these are 470Ks down here, and these are 47s. And so this should be exactly 470K, but they're not. They'll be slightly above, slightly below. Some could be exactly right but there'll be variances and differences of degree of error as well. By putting two in parallel, you increase your chances of getting two which are a good match. So for example, I've got two 470s here in parallel, it should be 940k. Sorry, in parallel, not serious. <laughs> 235k, exactly, right? That's what they should be, 235k, exactly. But if one's slightly below, or if they're both slightly below, you'll get slightly less. If they're both slightly above, you'll get slightly more. If one's below, one's above, you'll get exactly the right value. Now, the idea of doing them like this, in this arrangement, is in series and parallel strings, means 
you using the law of averages to help you get the value you actually want. The other reason to do it in this big string of devices as well is that they've got a maximum voltage rating of 200 volts per resistor. That's their spec, 200 volts max. And because it's potentially going to have a thousand volts put into it, that means you should be safe. It shouldn't arc across the resistors. Plus, it also goes through two sets of resistors back to itself, so the arcing will be across this pair. So you effectively got to go through 10 resistors, effectively, in order to get an arc, which means you've got 100 volts per resistor, kind of, but because you're obviously getting a different voltage drop across this lot compared to this lot, you're going to get a difference. So it's based on one block only, ignore the second block, and that means you should be safe at 200 volts across each one. In theory, which is also why I've used this size package, this package is a 1206 size, and this is because it's got a higher voltage rating. If I use a smaller size, it's a lower voltage rating, I've had to use more of them. And I had a bunch of these, and I've got, you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's easy, easy to do, easy to work with, easy to see on camera. That's the reasoning behind it. I did cover that in a previous video, so if you're not too sure about what I'm doing here, then maybe go and check that one out as well. I'll go into a lot more detail about some of the stuff. So. We'll now check these resistors before I put the trimmer in. In case I have to change anything, I've done a melt in the trimmer, which is something I didn't do until yesterday. I put the trimmer on, then I checked it and realised, oh, it's not right. So let's get my multimeter out and we'll check these and see if they look correct or not. All right, let's see what we get. So, probes together. Zero fine. Let's take across the first pair. 23.48. With a 47, so it should be 23.5. So that's pretty close. 23.42. 40, because these are two 82s in parallel, so it should be like 41 really. Get on there. Yeah, pretty much is. 23.5, 23.4. So each one is actually reading slightly lower than it really should. Anyway, it could be flux because I haven't cleaned the board yet. I've got, got to do that yet. Let's check in the basic functionality first. 234 ish. 234, 234, 234.5, which is where it should be, and 234. So all these are reading slightly low as well. So they're all reading a little bit low. Um, I'll give it a clean, that might change things too. So I've given it a clean, now it's going to just check the output resistance here. Now my note here is that I should be getting about 130.55555k for a trimmed divider, roughly. I mean, it's going to be a bit different to that, but that's my base setting I suppose you could say is a starting point and I'm getting 134.7k right now so I'm about 4k high which is probably a good thing it means I can trim it down now I just want to verify just by quickly shorting this out that I've actually got a usable divider here with the in fact I changed that resistor because it's 8.2k it should be 82k I believe because I think I've messed it up <laughs> decimal place in the wrong point anyway so I need to make sure I can short across this trimmer here and get it down to at least 130. 129.5. Okay, that's 1k lower. So it should be right actually. So I think, yeah, I probably was wrong. It should be 82k. Anyway, in theory, I might try 100k trimmer instead of 200. We'll see if we go. So what I've done here is I've got my 200k trimmer which I used yesterday on the other board, which is one I actually designed this board with, right? So this was the one I had in mind. So I put in all the resistor values as they should be, including this trimmer. Now I've adjusted it all the way down to one end, so the end which should give it the highest resistance for rating, which means it should be having the least effect on the circuit. And let's re-measure this and see what we actually get. At 131.5, which is 1k higher. So that gives me a pretty good range actually, it's about 1k up and 1k down, which is what I designed to be in the middle of the range. So I actually think that 200k pot is going to be fine. So we'll go with that. Right, let's solder this up. Here's my silver solder for this. I haven't added any extra flux. Silver solder actually works quite well anyway. Not going to worry about it too much. Put some on there. Make sure it's flat. Now these trimmers naturally, at least I discovered yesterday when I did the other one, it, um, it likes to sit slightly crooked, but it's actually a beneficial thing sitting slightly crooked because it helps it to miss the guard terminal when there's a plug in there so I'm just going to leave it as it is it's fine <laughs> happy with that clean up Get the flux off because flux will affect the readings maybe depending on humidity or dust environment that kind of stuff anyway cleaned up 
kind of. Right. Let's measure it again. Okay, is that reading there at the maximum? Let's uh, wind it down a bit and we'll see what we actually get out of it in the other direction. Very small adjustment, which is great. That's exactly what I want. I want very small adjustments. Slipped off. Very fine tuning, which is good. That's exactly what I want. But that's getting faster as I get towards the other end, which is expected. It's having a greater effect. There we go. So that's good. So that's, um, that's basically bang in the middle of what the theoretical measurement should be. It may not be the correct measurement, but it's a theoretical one. So I should go for 5, about there, 130.5, about there, that's about right. So what we'll do is hook up to my test gear and we'll actually test it and see what we get. Alright, so I've got my PDVS2 Mini, again, make sure you go and get one of these yourself, a really handy little references, very handy and very accurate. Being calibrated them against a HP 3458 8.5-digit multimeter, so, you know, they're pretty accurate. So what I'm going to do is shove this into here. Now these actually do fit in here, these, as per this design, they do go in, which is exactly what I meant. Again, if you want to see more detail about this stuff, then check the other video out. I'm going to shove this one into here, but unfortunately I have to make sure I get on the creepy bits. Like that. Got the guard on here as well. So I've got this and that, and this is going to run up to my multimeter, my siglant, which I've had powered on for about, I don't know, half an hour now. So it should be pretty close to accurate. That's looking pretty promising straight away. So let's change the camera around. I'll point you up at the siglant multimeter and we'll do some calibration work and see how close we get it. Alright, so let's just get this thing all set up so it's ready to go. Everything's set to zero right now. All our zeroing's turned on. 10 power line cycles, good enough for now. Let's do a relative measurement so it's zeroed out. And it's put in one volt. So we're getting 99 millivolts out. And it should be doing 100 millivolts. So we need to tweak this a little bit. And I'm just going to tune the adjuster on the board, so I've got to turn that clockwise to increase it. I think I'm in the middle of the range, or was it that one? I can't remember. Anyway, we'll turn it and see how we get. I think I set it in the middle, wouldn't I? Anyway, see if we can get there. Hopefully we can get to 100 millivolts. If we can't, I might have to change some resistance values. It's getting a bit close to running out of space, and I'm at the end. So I can't quite get there, so my resistance values aren't quite right. So I need to change one of these resistors, I think. I think I need to change the R21. I need to increase that resistor value just to shift it up a little bit because I still need the same tuning range, or very similar tuning range from the trimmer, but obviously I can't quite get high enough. So 200K is not quite there. So I can actually estimate how much I need based on how much it changes. So that's fully in, that's 200K. If I go all the other way, the other way I'll see how much it changes by. So this will be a 200K difference. So all the way the other way, this trimmer doesn't trip out. That's all the way the other way. So that's about one and a half volts I'm getting there in adjustment range across 200k. So I look like I'm, I probably need to go up by about 100k. And that's what it looks like, about 100k. That will give me an increase of about 0.7 volts. We should make this one about there as a bottom end of the limit. So it's one volt down, one percent down basically, or a millivolt down. And that will give me the top end will be about one up from there. So about 0.7 up from that one. So it's only just enough. So maybe just more than a little bit more than 100k. So that resistor there is currently a 270k. So if we look for something like maybe a 390, we'd be right. That should be about the middle then. Make that a 390. Right, that's that resistor change. That's now got a 390k in there instead. Let's see what we get now. So we still seem a bit low, but I'm not quite sure where I left the trimmer. So let's see what we get. So let's go up first. Oh, let's go down first. Let's see what we get. The bottom of our size range goes. Let's see what the range is. Because I still may need to tweak things. So it's not 9.2. I'm put injecting 10 volts right now as well, by the way. So I should be getting 1 volt exactly. Slightly off there. 0.8% there, but anyway, bring it all the way up the other way. See how far we can go on the positive side. If we get to one volt, that's good. How far does it go past that? 
Ooh, barely. It's a bit lopsided, isn't it? So I think what I should probably do is increase the resistive value some more and change this pot to be a smaller value pot. To give more precision. That's not bad though. Not really. So let's turn it down and try and get it exactly one volt. And um, see how hard it is to actually tune it and get it stabilised. I turned on auto zeroing and re redid the relative as well just to make sure it's all good. But I did it before I started recording. Now I could do a, a longer power line cycle, just do 100 power line cycles. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Obviously noise is in the area and this ball not being shielded and that sort of stuff is going to be playing an effect with having to jump around a little bit. But once I get the thing to a shielded case it should be a lot better, especially when I get proper banana connectors on here as well. So just being shoved into the holes on the PCB. All those kinds of things will help it. So that's not bad is it? We have to here. Uh, one microvolt, four microvolts difference. Yeah, I think that's right. What's the accuracy on that? And 10 volts going in. Mm, think about that. All right, so let's work out what the accuracy is of this. Now, I should be getting exactly one volt coming out. I'm getting, you know, about point, you know, one three, one four, one five, floating around there somewhere. So let's get my little calculator here out. So we want to do the actual voltage you're getting, which is 1.0000. Let's call it one four because it's floating around there, eh? One four. Minus what we should be getting, which is one, exactly. That. So you then divide that by the voltage you should, well, you should actually be getting, is that. And then you multiply that by 100 to get percentage. So 0.0014 percent. That's the accuracy. That's not bad. I can live with that. Just another little slight tweak, and it's now hovering around that perfection mark really. I think I can live with that. So don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you're interested in getting the files to make this for yourself. As I said, I'm only using basic parts. I'm not using anything high precision. If you want to use high precision parts, you will probably get a much better result with better accuracy and better Temco stability and that sort of stuff. Temco is quite an important aspect of it. Obviously right now, this is bang on, but will it still be bang on if I change the temperature by two degrees? Probably not. It might change by quite a bit. I really don't know. I'm going to have to do some long-term testing on these and see how they actually come out. But if you wanted to do this yourself, you could use high precision, high Temco parts. You could probably get a much better result than I'm just doing here using off-the-shelf standard components. I think this is a reasonable result, though. So make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, click the bell icon if you've not already got that clicked and stuff like that, and share the video if you want people to see it. Maybe people will be interested in seeing this little project. I'd say the files will be on Patreon if you want to download the Gerbers for this. The corrected Gerbers with the updated component values and stuff from my testing today. And see how it goes. So so thanks to PC Way for sponsoring the video. Go and check them out. They help me. Which helps you. Everybody helps each other. Catch you later. Bye.